Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and today we're going to be doing a review of the Ocmo G2000 uh, solar power generator. So this is a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter and it also has a built-in battery. Pretty much it's an all-in-one unit so everything is contained inside and it has a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, 2200 watt hours of lithium ion battery capacity. Not lithium iron phosphate, but a lot of people are using lithium ion. Keeps the weight down, they have a really high power density. They just don't last quite as long. Um, we're also gonna come in at about 46 pounds. Now, I did a review of the uh, 1000 watt model, and I will put a card up top if you're interested in that or if you wanna compare the two. Uh, this is its big brother, and basically these are really, really I close to being identical, except the extra size at the bottom. So the faceplate is and the display is identical. It just has more battery capacity down below. Now I put this through a bunch of tests and some other stuff, so we're gonna get right into that in just a second. Um, this was sent to me for free for the review, as well as both of their 100 watt solar panels. So this is capable of taking 200 watts of solar charging, um, which I wish was a little bit more. But we're gonna get into pros, cons, and all that good stuff here in just a second. I just wanted to let you know that I did receive this for free. And if you are interested in this, there will be links down below that will take you to their website or Amazon. Both of those are affiliate links. I do get paid if you guys buy through that as a qualifying purchase. So, that being said, why don't we get right into checking this thing out? And I'm gonna tell you the pros, cons, and you can make up your own mind about whether or not this is something that's right for you. Let's get right to it. So you do have three AC outlets here. And you're gonna have your DC imports here for your solar connections. And you have a PD 60 watts uh, type C connection here. Super fast charging 3.0 USB here then two normal 2.0 USBs here. DC 12 volt connectors here. And of course you have your DC output plug there. And basically to turn all these on, let's go ahead and show you, you're gonna hit the power button once. And you can hold down the AC unit to activate the AC outlets. If you want USBs, you click here. DC, you click here. So you can turn all of these off independently or turn the whole unit off like so. Okay, so looking at the case itself, it does seem really well made. The handles are built right into the casing. It feels very sturdy. You have an inlet port there for air to pass through the unit. And uh, it feels really well built. It's, it's not bad to carry around. The handles are never going anywhere. And on the other side, you do see we have those two fans for forcing air through the unit. And they are very quiet. And we will listen to that in just a little bit. Why don't we jump right into the solar panels? Now, I believe these are the same company that makes the Jackery panels, but it's really well built. It has a nice extension cable there. Uh, you can plug things directly into those two USBs. It has a USB type A at five volts at 2.4 amps and a USB-C at five volts and three amps. So you can plug those directly into the panel, which is really, really handy. Once you get these all set up and on the table using those little Velcro legs, which makes it really, really easy, you can plug in the extension and then you have a, a I think it's four different uh, varieties of connection ports on the end, so you can connect to different devices. Um, it also comes with a adapter where you can connect both uh, solar panels together and use one Anderson port, or you can use each panel individually using the other DC in port there as well. And that's what I'm gonna do today, is just plug one into the top port and one into the Anderson down below and it does seem to be working just fine. Now, this is a big problem for me. It seems like whenever I plug in the solar, you can see the fan cuts off, and that's plugged into the cigarette lighter adapter, and that entire module will not turn back on uh, with the cigarette lighter adapter as long as solar is connected. The USB connection port, that all those USBs work just fine with solar connected, but not the cigarette lighter module area right there. No matter what I tried using the top one, uh, the top connection in port and the Anderson uh, power connection port, I could never get the cigarette lighter adapter to work with solar connect. And that's, that's a real big bummer to me because that's the most efficient way to use the batteries by using that cigarette light, lighter adapter or those two uh, 12 volt little sockets. And so they just do not work as long as solar is connected. And that's, that's a problem they need to fix. Now onto the testing for multiple devices. We're gonna be using this laptop, which has a, a real low battery. And then we have that Dometic uh, cooler. We also have two walkie talkies, my cell phone, this Bluetooth speaker, and we are gonna have all that connected to solar. And this is one bar down when I started this test so we can see if it'll actually gain some power while running all of this stuff simultaneously. And here after about uh, 
uh, I don't know, this is right as we started the test, basically. Uh, just about 30 minutes in, you can see it's 55 degrees inside the cooler, 70 outside. Now we're gonna disconnect the solar. You can see that it did go up a bar, so it will charge while you run all of this stuff. And with all of these things connected, we're running at about 94 watts. So you could run double this and uh, be just fine with two 100 watt panels. Now, this uh, cooler, after about an hour and a half of use, you can see it's about 72 degrees outside, but it's just been in 75 degree sun uh, for an hour and a half. And inside, you can see it's about 45, 46 degrees. And I might even have some V8s in here, and these feel really cold to the touch, perfect drinking temperature. So the cooler did really well, and it did a very good job of powering the cooler in direct sun. With those solar panels, we gained power. So that's really cool. You could power double the amount of things here while you're camping and still come under that 200 watts of solar. So that's really, really handy while you're camping. Um, now we're going to knock it up a notch by turning on a heater. Now we're going to really push the inverter to the test now that we know it's solar capable for a lot of smaller electronics while we're camping. You can see the watt meter is going to shoot right up there to about 1,000 watts. We're at 1,300 there, but once it kind of warms up, it'll go down to around 1,100, 1,000 watts, something like that. And it's running that just fine, along with all these other things. The laptop itself actually has really bad batteries, so it's going to continue to charge pretty much forever. And we have, of course, the Dometic cooler, the walkie-talkies, the cell phone, the Bluetooth speaker, etc. And then that heater going as well, and it's handling everything just fine. But now we're going to try and push it over the top and add another heater. The first heater is on high, and now we're going to turn the second heater on low. And once we do that, we're going to go from 1,089 watts at 330, um, 334. We're going to turn on the secondary heater on low, and we're going to watch that thing just shoot right on up there to 2,200 watts. And you can see my watt meter is saying overload there because that's a lot of power to be running through it. And uh, we're 200 watts over the 2,000 watt pure sine wave inverter. So I anticipate this will shut off because we're going over the maximum rated capacity of this thing by 200 watts. And as I'm talking here, doing the, uh, the little test out in the field, it actually clicks off and I'm like, oh, did the inverter kick? But it did not. It was actually my surge protector that tripped, not the ACMO. So it was uh, actually too much power for the surge protector to handle. That just goes to show you how much power is actually flowing out of this thing right now. So what I decided we'd do is we're just going to disconnect one of the walkie-talkies, which is a very minimal power draw anyway, especially now that the battery's charged up. And we're going to plug the secondary heater directly into the ACMO. But keep in mind, we know that we're using 2200 watts. So even though it'll only say 1100 on the watt meter, we have that other 1000 watts coming through the heater. So we're still using 2200 watts. And uh, that way my watt meter won't, won't fry and uh, hopefully our, our surge protection protector will not trip a second time and everything did kick back on so the ACMO did not trip it was just the surge protector so now here we are pulling 2200 watts two space heaters and as you can see here you know we're kicking 300 watts out of the little guy that's on high and if we go over and take a temperature reading on the big guy we're kicking out about 250 watts on it so both heaters are functioning and running and we're going to see exactly how long that's going to last us so both heaters are on so we're pulling 2200 watts. I just can't show it with uh, using that one power strip. There's too much power for a power strip. So that just kind of goes to show you how much power is coming out of this thing right now. And she's still going. Very quiet, by the way. The fans are whisper quiet on this thing. That's good. If you recall, we started this at about 3.35 in the afternoon. We started running some really heavy draw stuff through it. So we're going to run this time lapse and it's going to stop at about 3.49. And so that's about 15 minutes at 2,200 watts, 200 watts over the 2,000 watt capacity. So that's a very successful high draw test for the inverter. And after all that, we're at about two bars out of the five. But uh, now it's charging back up with those 200 watt solar panels. So I think that's a pretty successful test for us. We know that it'll run, you know, anything under about 180 watts with two 100 watt panels all day. And then you'll have tons of capacity for night, uh, no problem whatsoever. And it will run 2200 watts. Uh, so that's definitely a, a good solid inverter test. It's gonna run anything under 2000 just fine for you. Um, so that's pretty darn cool.
Now I saw an online review where it was unable to run a customer's refrigerator and I thought that's a huge problem if true. So I wanted to test this on my LG double door refrigerator. I ran an extension cord down to the basement, charged this guy fully up and plugged my refrigerator into it. Now I didn't have any problems with it staying running uh, with my test. And you can see here we're starting at 2.30 PM. I'm gonna plug in the fridge, start the time lapse and we'll see how well it does. Now the problem could have been that the refrigerator was different and maybe it had no power draw when the compressor wasn't on, which led the unit to think that there was nothing plugged in and it went to sleep, um, which would be a problem that they should solve, or it could have been a faulty unit. All I can tell you with all honesty is that it was able to run my refrigerator successfully during this test um, and never did shut off. So it worked just fine for me. However, with only 200 watts of solar that you can input, um, it would not be a sustainable option. But you can see it ran to 2.54 p.m., which means that it ran for 26 hours and 30 minutes, running my fridge just fine during normal operation. We use the ice maker, we use the water machine. Everything seemed to work fine. So in my experience, uh, that's, that's a successful refrigerator test. Well, there you go. We've heard the pros. We've heard the, the cons and stuff like that. If this unit does end up being right for you, there are two links down below. One for the Agma website, one for the Amazon affiliate link website. These are affiliate links. So if you decide to buy through these links, it doesn't cost anything extra, but I get a percentage. And on their website, if I can, I'll get you a discount code as well. So uh, all that stuff being said, it is a really cool unit. I really enjoy the 1000 watt little brother just because it's so lightweight with that lithium ion chemistry. It's easy to lug around and it's easy to just power things that you need. You don't want to run an extension cord to around the house or it'd come in really handy when you're camping or you throw it in the back of your car so you can run a tire compressor or run a light at night or a little cooler or whatever. So it does definitely have some really cool applications and it does have some limitations depending on what you're wanting to use it for. But I have enjoyed it and the G2000 is just a huge inverter that does really, really well. That was impressive that it ran two heaters and I was able to push it at 2200 watts, 200 watts over its 2000 watt inverter load for about 10 minutes before it finally said, hey, that's enough, you're, you're over the limit. So 2000 watts and under, you're good to go. That's gonna run a huge microwave or refrigerator for a long time. Um, this, this guy's really gonna come in handy for power outages or any number of things. Um, and the solar panels are actually really cool. I like the way they're set up. I wish you could plug more of them into this unit to get more solar capacity, but the solar panels themselves are actually pretty cool. They're just kind of neat the way they have their pockets, their little folding stands, they're easy to carry, they're lightweight. I kind of like them. Um, as always with any product, if you look in the description below and something goes wrong down the road, if I have an update of any kind, um, good or bad, I try and go back and update the description so that you know about it. And that way I kind of keep the review up to date. So make sure you check the descriptions for that. And um, I think that about covers it. Really cool unit. If it works for you, check it out with the links below. And um, if this video helped you out, please like, share, subscribe. Click that little notification bell so you actually get notified when I do new videos. That really helps me out. So I think that about covers it. So until the next video, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. Thank you so much for watching and happy camping.